<laughs> uh, today we're going to talk about this topic right here from uh, Jared Lewis. It's a, a tweet that he put out. He said, I don't think people realize how far you can get by just doing the opposite of everyone. And then he goes on to say, it will always benefit your life. Everyone you know only has a job. Start an online business ASAP. Everyone you know drinks regularly. Don't drink. So today, if you don't realize I'm in the dungeon, you don't see a background on my screen like we usually have. Just want to show everybody uh, I live a normal life, normal house, normal everything. I'm not sitting over here in Beverly Hills. I'm not sitting over here in Palm Beach. As you see, this is my office, whiteboard over there, a whole bunch of gobbledygook. That piece of paper right there is a violation I got on one of my rental properties. So just a normal person. This is my, this is my like war chat. My world whiteboard where I, you know, write down ideas, uh, look at target properties. Uh, and you even see some math problems over there. So, yeah, I help people out when they don't understand the math of things. But just normal, you know, couch here, TV over here, nothing special. You know, if I went out to my garage, there's no Lamborghinis. But I have reached uh, financially places where people haven't reached. Um, Alex, I want to go in on this and you know how I feel about the subject, but want to start off just letting everybody know just cause you're on YouTube, you don't have to sit there and, you know, do all this flash and stuff just to attract people. Just let people know you're human and know that you're normal and give them something that they can achieve. You know, when you come out there and the only thing you want to do is flash them beginnings. Yeah, it looks, it looks cool. You know? You're going to have the jealousy and envy factor. That's why people look, you know, they want to see flaws in the game. But mm -hmm. I believe since we started this channel, we never gave a false perception about our lives. You know, only thing we do is eat. Well, me eat, you know, drink a little bit. You know, I try to get out there and get Alex to uh, spend some money, but he he won't. He won't. I believe I'd be he'd be paying a tip and then soon the server turn it back, he'd probably be taking the tip back. You know, Alex ain't spending no money. But um, but yeah, but back on this topic, Alex. Uh, this is one that sits close to me, but I'm gonna let you go in on it first. So what's your thoughts on this topic here? I agree with it, especially like not just applying to finance, but for, for life itself. I know people that I mean, just what the majority of people are doing, just if you do the opposite, I think you'll see differences. Um, Kirby, I know you like to drink. Uh, so that one I thought was funny on there. Um, but like one thing that a lot of people that seems pretty common today is like smoking. I won't mention what it is, but certain substances that people do. Um, I don't participate in that. Um, and I've seen that it can maybe hold people back because it's kind of like what they're always spending their money on and it's not necessarily maybe an addiction but they're so it's it's a bad habit it's just you're constantly spending money on it just like uh, any other products you would use that you're constantly spending money on and that can be said for anything if you have a bad habit of constantly stopping and getting something to eat out you know going out to eat and you can't afford it that's a bad habit too just do the opposite of what people do and I would even argue maybe that's what people, a lot of people do is they're always ordering out. They're always having food delivered. They're always going out to eat. And if you do the opposite of that, you'd see how much money you would have. There's just so many things that you could do different rather than trying to fit in with the crowd and impress other people that would actually get you to a life that would be impressive to those same people. Um, but it all comes with discipline, I think. Just discipline and emotional control. And from that, you'll see a difference in your life. And, I mean, just question it. We always say question information received. If what everything people were doing was uh, going to lead them to success, then you would see everybody successful. But, you know, you look at what people do the extreme things that people do, like say on social media, these uh, influencers or these pages that are that have multimillionaires or high performance individuals, you look at what they're doing and it's nothing that the crowd is doing, but you see the results that come from it. So I would argue if what people were doing was 
the way to go, then why isn't everybody successful? But Kirby, what do you see on this? I know drinking was a was a shot at you, but <laughs> maybe you don't agree with that one. <laughs> no, I actually actually I do. I, I do agree with it. But um that that has been my um that's exactly so people understand that's exactly how I got to where I was at. Um so it's a it's a song called and Alex I know you won't know the song, but it's a song called One Nine Hundred Hustlers. It was by Jay Z, uh, people on Rockefeller, Memphis Bleak. But Memphis Bleak had a had a, a verse in there, and he said, "The young move quiet." I mean, he said, "The smart move quiet. The weak start riots." I know you got a brick, but sell them twenties till they tire. So, just breaking that down is. So the smart move quiet. Or the strong move quiet, excuse me. When I when I grew up and you know, we in the hood, you know, you had the flashy guys, you had the guys driving, you know, the you know, the old schools with the rims, the candy paint, all that. They was always loud, they always talking loud. I mean, even people in my family, they they talk loud, flash, and made it look like they had it all. But then as I grew older, uh, I realized that's all they have they have the envy of people that can't afford it. So that was the first thing I ever took is when I get it, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show it, but me being young at first, I thought that's what you're supposed to do. So I would always have all the fancy clothes, the jewelry and all that other stuff. And I used to always walk around and be the envy of, you know, people that just couldn't afford it. I was still broke, but I was just loud with it. So people thought I had more than what I really did. And what the truth was, was I was super broke trying to impress everybody else. But then I flipped my mindset to be the opposite. Just, I just sat down one day and said, everything that you know about money, about finances, about being successful in the financial landscape, you don't know nothing. And everything that you learned growing up from your um, a superiors, aunts, uncles, you know, the older heads in the neighborhood, you got to do the, op the exact opposite of it. So everything that I do, especially when I started the journey, I would think, did I see somebody else do it? Or is this something somebody else would do? And if the answer was yes, I would do the exact opposite of it. You know, so when I got a paycheck and everybody was talking about going to the club, would everybody else go to the club? on payday yeah so i wouldn't do it and then so i would just sit there and hold the funds i would sit there and hold the fund and then i didn't know anybody that looked like me or i didn't know nobody at all that would invest their money so that's why i started learning how to invest you know i heard about people uh having 401ks but everybody i knew that had 401ks they didn't know what it was didn't know how to operate it and let's be let's tell the truth they were still broke living paycheck to paycheck so so I wanted to immerse myself and understand what it was before I did it. I mean, everybody, you know, growing up always said, oh, you got to get a good job with benefits with the 401k. But nobody I talked to growing up, they probably had maybe $25,000, $30,000 max in their 401k and they on the verge of retirement. How can you retire on $30,000? Even in the 1980s, how can you retire on $30,000? You can't. So that's all I did. And I did that for a long period of time. So when I got my paycheck, when everybody was going to the club, I was investing. When everybody was going on vacation, I was investing. When everybody was having birthday parties, Christmases, and all those other holidays, I was investing. And then that's and that's how I came with my mantra of my favorite time to invest. So of course we hear on uh right after Thanksgiving, Alex, you know, this is my prime time when it come to finding properties and things like that because I know what everybody else is doing. Everybody's worried about the Black Friday sales, the Cyber Monday sales, the holidays, you know, buying Christmas gifts, doing all that holiday extravaganzas and going on trips and vacation. I know they're not paying attention to the MLS. I know they're not paying attention to, to, to new um, properties that's coming on the market. You remember last year at this time, um, I think it was right after Thanksgiving, everybody's at the Black Friday sale, a property come on the market. It's only on the market for like, what, two hours? And I took it off the market. Hell of a deal. 
And that's that's what I do. I just do the opposite of what everybody else do. The whole drinking thing, yeah. People don't need to drink. I mean, even though I do drink, no, they, they need to stop. Especially when you don't have the money to do it. I mean, depending on what you're drinking, that gets expensive. Especially if you go into the bar, that really gets expensive. You know what I mean? So th those are the things that I just did over a long period of time. It just kept repeating, 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 repeating. Yeah, now that I can afford it, I do it. But I mean, the time that I go out to just like a bar to just go splurge on uh, drinking, maybe I, when I'm out with you, I go out there, but most of the time, just sit in the house, hang out by myself, watch some sports, have a couple beverages. Of course, when I crash your house, when I crash your house, you got the whole setup. So, you know, <laughs> it's like a buffet over there at your house. It's calling my name at that point. So I got to, I got to have a sip of five. So that's, that's really, that's really how I go about it. But it's the average everyday layman that's still living paycheck to paycheck, that's wondering how they're going to keep the lights on. No, they shouldn't be doing nothing. They should be doing opposite of what everybody around them doing because everybody around them is broke. So that's what they should be doing. And Alex, I saw a point on here where you said start an online business. I mean, that's that's you right there. I mean, before I mean, before you started your online business, did you know, I mean, probably some people you work with helped you out. But did you know anybody in your circle that had anything business-wise going on? No, I mean, the only person I really knew was my mom, who is a nail tech. She um, she gets her own money, her own clients. But when I started, I didn't even look at it as a business. It was like, to me, I was just like selling stuff. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm making money. Um, but I mean, it's true, though. I mean, when I started making money, I didn't. And I mentioned this before. I didn't think that there were other ways to make money i thought like you had to have a job to make money and i don't know where i got that way of thinking from but i think maybe since i thought that way maybe there's a ton of other people that think the same way the only way to make money is get a job and so it just opened my eyes and then from there i just kind of started like deep diving into other ways to make money and and then so and and this is and you wonder where you get it from is that's the environment you grew up in i mean that's how i grew up oh you got to get a job you got to get benefits you got to pay for health care but then as you get older and again like you said question the information you receive health care doesn't cost that much you don't need a job just for health care right I right mean, especially so and that's the one thing that people say oh i gotta get a job so they can pay my health care and the truth is most jobs don't pay 100 percent of your health care so you're still paying a percentage of it like I know people who the job pay 85% of their uh, healthcare bill, but they still come out of pocket four to $800 a month for healthcare. So you're still, you're still paying, you're still paying even with the job, but that that's something that just growing up. And like I said, it's the, uh, you know, baby boomers and stuff like that. That's the only thing they knew was get a job, get good benefits, you know, collect a pension, but now we don't have pensions. You know, right. uh, 401k, they'll they'll invest the bare minimum, you know, probably up to the employee match 3%, 5%, and that's it. And then, of course, they borrow from the 401k. So when the retirement time come, they're sitting in the negative or they're sitting with a couple thousand dollars in there and think they're going to do something. So I think, you know, doing the opposite of what everybody's doing has gotten me a long way. I know it has gotten me a long way because if I kept following down that perpetual cycle and I still see family and friends still living off the old mantra of oh yeah you you get some money you put you put something in the savings accounts and live off the interest they don't even know what the interest rate is in the bank that that's paying them they sitting there losing money because it made sense in the 70s and 80s to put it in a in a uh, savings account because you're getting six eight ten percent on your saving interest rate but now you're getting little to nothing but nobody ever questioned the, to see why they just say oh you're just supposed to put it in the bank and gain interest they never you know, articulated or understood why the why the interest was good at one period of time and it's not good at this period of time. You got to find different avenues. So that's that's what I learned was just doing opposite. It wasn't that I was the smartest man in the world. It wasn't that oh I'm this big nerd that just loved to read books. The first initial thing I did was the opposite of what everybody else around me was doing, and and that's how I first got out of debt, and then got up to six figures and then seven figures and so on and so forth. But that was the that was the beginning grounds of it, just doing opposite of what everybody else is doing.
yeah absolutely but all that being said guys if you like the video hit the like button leave a comment down below subscribe share and we'll see you guys on the next video